having set up our environment in FCPX, it's time to start doing some editing with shortcuts. And we're going to do this in the context of a workflow. So let's start with the basics. First of all, we have our event library, the library portion itself in the event browser. We have our viewer. We have our inspector, which is contextual. And we have our timeline or project library. It toggles between the two. Um, we have set up already some clips. And we're getting ready to do the first step in laying out a rough cut, which is to review some footage, set some ins and outs, and start building something on a timeline. Let's get a new timeline going. Uh, we don't need to worry about what pane we're in. We simply hit Command N to create a new timeline. Gives us our dialog. I'm going to call this Don Ed 2. And I hit return. We're going to go with the, with the uh, defaults at the moment. And we can see down in the timeline window that I have a blank timeline, or storyline as it's actually called in FCPX. Now bear in mind that we can always toggle between our timeline and our project, uh, our project list by hitting Command-0. And you can see that I have a previous cut that I worked on. And as we discussed earlier, you'll see all of your projects listed here, which, which has some, some nice implications for workflow that we'll discuss later. If we want to go into either of these, we can click it or we can use our up and down arrow key. Again, no reason to put our hand on the mouse yet. I'm going to make sure that I have Don Ed 2 selected. I'll hit Command 0 to toggle that back to the timeline. And the first thing you want to know about this workflow is Command 1 will take you to the event library slash browser. Command 2 will snap you back to the timeline. Although, when you bring a clip down from the browser, it will automatically select the timeline. Let's hit Command-1. Um, and if I hit Command-2, you'll notice that the color of the timeline changes subtly. You'll get used to this, and you'll be able to tell which has focus, as we call it. Um, but I'm back in the event library. Now, you'll notice that I have a one-person smart playlist selected here, which is only giving me two clips to, to go through. Uh, one little trick that I have found to make using the, the, the event library easier is to toggle using uh, Shift Command 1. Remember, Command 1 gives us the, the event library. Shift Command 1 is going to toggle whether or not that media portion of it shows. The beauty of this is that when I toggle, there's actually two benefits. When I toggle to a full screen on the browser, I have more room for a film clip or a film strip view, if that's what I prefer. Uh, and I'm able to toggle through whichever elements I want to see. If I hit uh, Shift Command 1 and toggle back, notice how the focus has shifted back to the library and I can navigate up, say, to the master event for Don Ed, where I'll have more things to choose from. Now if I toggle back, Shift Command 1, I can go up and down through all of my media. I only have four clips in here at the moment. I can go through all this media and that's a nice little way to avoid using the mouse and have full command of your media and get in and out. When I'm using the up and down arrow key to navigate this list, all I have to do is start using the classic J, K, and L commands to start auditing a clip. J, K, and L are in almost every editing package, the absolute most important shortcuts to know. Uh, J moves you backwards, K stops you, L moves you forward. If I tap L repeatedly, I'm going to move fast and I'm going to slew through that tape. If I hit I, I can set an endpoint. Now, this lights up the selection indicator that you see in FCPX, and of course, I could be using my mouse to select ins and outs. But why let go of the keyboard and reach for the mouse we can, when you can use J, K, and L to set these? Setting a new O always replaces the old one. And a lot of standard editing commands like Shift-I to go to the already selected endpoint or Shift-O are available. Once I have selected, or in fact if I don't make selections, the entire clip is selected by default. Once I have done that, I'm now looking at bringing this clip down into the timeline. 